Uh, welcome everybody to ABCPE, the site where we try and make VCE physical education uh, as easy as ABC. Today I'd like to uh, discuss angular momentum, a common exam question and one you're likely to get uh, on your sack. Uh, let's define it. Let's start by defining it. The quantity of rotation of a body around an axis and the formula, as you can see, the angular momentum is moment of inertia times angular velocity and we'll have a chat about angular uh, sorry moment of inertia in the next slide classic example would be um, a gymnast somersaulting as you saw in the last slide and then of course a, a batter swinging their cricket bat around that axis of the shoulder uh, moment of inertia body's reluctance to rotate and again let's have a look at the equation moment of inertia equals mass times radius squared. And the radius measures how far that mass is distributed from the axis of rotation. So a cricketer, for example, can alter uh, the moment of inertia when they select their cricket bat. Uh, they can select a heavier, uh, longer bat for a greater moment of inertia. And as long as they can swing that bat with the same angular velocity, they should therefore get more angular momentum and hit the ball a lot further. A young person, however, may choose a lighter um, and shorter bat because they may struggle to uh, to swing a bat with a, a large moment of inertia at the same angular velocity. I've made a bit of a video just to help you understand that concept. Okay, so you can see that I'm going to select a cricket bat. I've got a light one that I've just picked up and a heavier one. Um, now I'm going to choose the heavier one and this is obviously the one that has the most moment of inertia. So I should be able to gain a lot of momentum with that one. You might see if you give a full size bat to a younger person, they will choke the grip. And what they're doing there is they're altering the radius there. That is that they're uh, moving their hands down and um, making the bat easier to swing. They should really grab the lighter and the shorter bat, which is the red one. Uh, and that way they'll be able to swing the bat easier, gain more angular velocity and hit some sixes. Thanks for listening. Uh, 2019, VCAR gave uh, an exam question on this concept. I'll give you a moment to read it. Okay, well, welcome back. Um, let's see how you went. So we have a coach of a junior baseball team who has asked his players to use longer and heavier bats but not seen uh, any improvement in performance. Uh, and now based on your biomechanical understanding of the concepts we've just studied, uh, we need to explain why that happened. Uh, and VCAR have made it a little easier for us by signposting the words that we need to use, angular velocity, mass, force, and levers. Let's leave levers out because we haven't studied that at this point. Uh, but hopefully uh, with the knowledge that you now have, you're able to say, well, by choosing longer, longer and heavier bats, we've uh, increased the mass of the bat. Um, so now we have a greater moment of inertia to overcome. It requires more force to overcome um, that increased mass, which makes it harder to swing at a high angular velocity. Um, of course, young players don't have the same musculature as older players, so they may not be able to apply the same amount of force or a large amount of force on the longer and heavier bats, which means they um, may not be able to overcome that mass and swing at a fast enough angular velocity to hit the ball very far at all, or in fact, they, they may not even be able to hit the ball. So um, hopefully, that's uh, something similar to what you got. Conservation of angular momentum um, is a concept that some people do struggle with, and it's a popular exam question. Um, basically, it states that when there's no external forces acting on an object, i.e., they're in the air doing a somersault um, in a dive or a, a, a gymnastics routine. There's no change of angular momentum. So once, so for example, the somersault starts, um, there's no change of angular momentum. Now, I really need to highlight that there's no change of angular momentum. So when um, an object is airborne, uh, often you'll see gymnasts, for example, tucking um, so that what they're doing is decreasing their moment of inertia. And when they do that, they increase their angular velocity because there's no change in angular momentum. Uh, in order to land, uh, they need to slow down. So what they will do is they'll untuck or they'll increase their moment of inertia by uh, laying out 
uh, that will slow their angular velocity, uh, but their angular momentum will remain the same until they hit the ground. Watch the ice skater here um, and how they or she changes her angular velocity to help explain it. The ice skater comes in, begins her angular momentum, leg is out, spinning slowly, tucks the leg in, brings it closer to the axis, and spinning increases dramatically. Let's watch that again. So in she comes, begins angular momentum, starts with her leg out, that is moment of inertia is high, angular velocity is low, but as she changes her radius, moment of inertia decreases, angular velocity seriously increases. Great work. Uh, hopefully that uh, gave you better understanding or explained it well. Uh, in 2019, VCAR had a, a multiple choice exam question on this. Uh, let's see how you go. Now that you've had time to read that, um, gymnast goes from a full layout position to a tuck position. What's going to happen to their angular momentum? Well, hopefully um, you understand now that D is the correct answer, that it must remain the same. When they're in the air, whether they're, when they're in the full layout position, they've got a, a large moment of inertia, so they will be, they'll have a small angular velocity. When they're in the tuck position, it's the opposite, a small um, moment of inertia, but a very high angular velocity. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And please, um, if you require any more help, go to our website at www.abcpe.com.au. We'll see you next time. Thank you.